Hi, I'm Dr. John, and today I'm going to talk to you about decay. Um, many of us as adults, uh, you know, come to a point in our life where we feel like we either have pretty good teeth or maybe we have pretty bad teeth. And you might even be in the same family, you'll say like one, uh, one of the siblings uh, just got the good teeth and the other one got the bad teeth. And I'm here to uh, explain to you that that isn't always the case. I've been practicing dentistry for 35 years and what I found is that uh, you really don't see that much difference in like the hardness of the enamel or the resistance to decay from person to person, definitely within families, but even from family to family, okay? Um, then one might say, well, you know, um, I get a lot of cavities because I have bad eating habits, and that might be true to a degree, but they start pinning it down to, I eat a lot of candy or there's a lot of bad for your teeth type foods that I eat. And I contend, once again, after a long time of practicing, that when it comes to decay, there really aren't any bad foods, okay? And I'm, I'm going to try to explain to you what I mean by that and try to maybe shed some light on some things that you can, or some differences you can make in your life that would help you stop getting decay if you as an adult are continuing to have decay, okay? Um, to start with, I want to explain uh, how you get, or what you need to get a cavity. You need three things to get a cavity. You need a tooth. Now, obviously, you could extract uh, your teeth and not get cavities, but we don't want to do that. Um, <clears throat> you also need plaque, which a lot of you may know is uh, basically bacteria. It's a bacterial growth, a film that grows on your teeth between brushings. And uh, uh, this bacteria grows uh, every eight hours. I mean, you could brush and floss your teeth really good right now, and eight hours later, you'll have a whole uh, complement of plaque again on your teeth. So that's why we usually talk about trying to brush three times a day. Okay. Now, just with those two, you can't get cavity. Okay. Now, uh, the, the third thing that you need uh, in order to get a cavity to go along with the tooth and the plaque is sugar. Okay. Now, uh, you notice I said sugar. I didn't say candy. I didn't say pop. You know, I could have said milk. I could have said bread. I could have said fruit. I could have said uh, flavored water. I mean, there's a lot of really good things that have sugar in them. Okay, and like I like I said already, I, I contend that there really are no bad bad foods or good foods when it comes to decay. Okay, uh, now just to explain a little bit how those three work together to cause cavities. Uh, basically, you sit down to eat a meal. And I can guarantee you that in any given meal, there's going to be some sugar, whether it be in the starches, which convert into sugars, or whether it be outright sugar, um, or uh, fruit, or whatever source it is, there's going to be some sugar in that meal. So basically what happens is the plaque, the bacteria, takes the sugar and almost instantly converts it into acid. And since uh, plaque is sticky, it holds the acid up against the enamel of the tooth. And the enamel is just the outer layer of the tooth, okay? The enamel happens to be the very hardest substance in the body. It's harder than bone. And it's a thin layer on the outside of the tooth. And basically, the acids try to eat through that e enamel. And, uh, and it takes many, many assaults for that to happen, okay? It doesn't just happen overnight, okay? But once the decay gets through that outer coating of enamel, it can grow much more quickly when it gets into the underlying dentin, which is relatively softer than dentin, okay? And sometimes it seems overnight, all of a sudden, you've got a cavity and a piece of tooth breaks into it, and, and you think you just got the cavity then, when in reality, that cavity's been coming for a long time. Now, Getting regular dental check checkups, obviously, would, would help uh, help you to catch some of these cavities before they got to be massive. Um, uh, but that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother video, okay? Um, so, uh, basically, you sit down at a meal, uh, you eat, and you have sugar. The plaque gets the sugar, forms acid, and the acid's trying to eat through your enamel, okay? Now, when you finish eating the meal, even if you don't brush your teeth right after the meal, as long as there's no food stuck between your teeth, that acid will be gone in approximately 20 minutes on the average person. Now, basically what happens is your saliva buffers the acid and brings that pH, that low acidic pH, up out of that acid range up into a more neutral range within about 20 minutes. So at that point, uh, your teeth are not being destroyed by acid any longer, okay? Now, uh, my experience has shown me that people who eat uh, pretty much three meals a day, maybe throw one snack in there, hardly ever get a cavity. And honestly, that's, uh, 
uh, based on almost uh, quite a wide range of brushing habits too. Some people that really don't take very good t care of their teeth as far as brushing habits still don't get cavities if those are their eating habits, okay? And on the other hand, uh, people who uh, actually get sugar in their mouth on a more frequent uh, uh, schedule, uh, but basically snacking between meals, in fact, get cavities more frequently, okay? Now, if you think about that, uh, you know, you're going to have a 20-minute exposure to acid plus the time it took you to eat, eat the food, okay? Uh, whereas between meals when you're snacking, I mean, you may be working out in the heat and maybe drinking pop or drinking Gatorade or, or some fruit juice for that matter. Uh, and every time you take a swig of that, uh, that 20-minute cycle starts. And if sometime later you take another swig, another 20-minute cycle starts. And if it's less than 20 minutes, it just adds on 20 minutes. Um, something I, I suggest to people is that you uh, carry a little notepad for you for a while if you're having a hard time getting a, a finger on what exactly you're doing to yourself here. And uh, every time something goes into your mouth, uh, you write it on one line of that notepad. Now, a, a meal counts as one line. Whole meal counts as one line. Okay. And however, between meals, if you're you know coming back from lunch with the remainder of a uh, soda pop that you didn't finish and you're sitting down at a desk and you're going to sip on that for the next two hours, every sip starts the 20 minute cycle going. And unless you take uh, multiple sips within 20 minutes, it's all just one, you know, each one is one line. Okay. Now, at the end of the day, you multiply the number of lines that you, that you uh, entered uh, by 20 minutes and you'll see your, ac your actual acid exposure on that given day. Okay. This is, this is uh, eye opening when you do this. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to, I have, this is my first actual dental video, even though it's Dr. John here. I've been doing politics, uh, as you, I'm sure you well know. Uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to show you a case here that may, maybe it may make the point even better for you. Okay. Now this patient is a patient who just came in a few weeks ago and she's 50 years old. We'll call her Mary. And Mary came in with toothache and we took x-rays on her. And, uh, I look at her x-rays and before I even look in her mouth, I told her, uh, that I thought something had changed in her life, uh, probably in the last few years or so. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to show you an x-ray here on the screen. Uh, these are what we call bite wing x-rays. And uh, these are the ones that, you know, the dentist puts in your mouth and he takes an x-ray shot through here and, and develops it. And uh, the view is like standing on your tongue, looking at the insides of your back teeth. Okay, and that's what I'm going to show you on Mary. Okay, and I'm going to kind of come up close here. You'll see right, pretty much right where my finger is. There's a, I don't know if you can see this that well, but there's actually a broken off tooth that's had a root canal and it's decayed and now it's broken off of the gum line and, and in fact had to come out, okay? And then the tooth right in front of that one over here, actually the two in front of them have got some large plastic fillings, which we'll talk about in another YouTube here, but I, I really don't like to see plastic fillings on people's back teeth, but these are failing and decaying. And then back, going back a little bit further here, there's another root canal tooth. Looks like a crown came off on the tooth. Uh, then we've got a missing tooth down here. And then these two teeth right in the front here. These are the ones I want to talk about. And those two teeth I would call virgin teeth. Okay. Now, when I say virgin tooth, uh, what I mean is that these teeth have been there since, since she was 10 years old. They came in when she was approximately 10 years old, and they've never decayed. Okay. Now, when I see that the tooth right behind it has been extracted at some point in her life, the two teeth, three teeth right above it, two have big plastic fillings that are decaying, and then one of them's had a root canal and uh, broken off at the gum line and having to be extracted, you might, you might say, looking at all this travesty that's happening in this mouth, you might say, well, this lady has bad teeth. Okay? And she, in fact, she said that herself. I've just got bad teeth. I'm embarrassed. I haven't been going to the dentist, but I just got bad teeth. Okay? Well, I look at her x-rays, and before I even look in her mouth, I say, you know, I, I think you're wrong. I think you actually have good teeth because you have two posterior teeth that are virgin in your mouth, never decayed since you were 10 years old and you're 50, okay? There aren't too many adults walking around, uh, no matter what their other dental history is, that can say that they have a virgin back teeth in their mouth, okay? Well, she looks puzzled at this point, okay? And then I asked her, I said, you know, it looks like you've been having some decay problem going on in recent years that's maybe accelerated. I'm just wondering, has something changed in your life recently? And she says, well, yeah, it has. And uh, what's changed is she's she decided to get healthy with respect to how she eats. And she told me that she basically only eats fruits and vegetables now. And I said, well, that, that sounds great. I mean, fruits and vegetables are healthy and they're good, but when do you eat them? And she looks at me and she says, 
all day long. And herein lies the problem. Okay, uh, this lady, uh, after after discussing this with her for a while, she she told me that what she actually does is she eats her regular meals of fruits and vegetables, and then when she gets hungry between meals, she snacks on strawberries. Well, it might as well have been jelly beans, to be real honest with you, because the plaque doesn't care. The plaque just wants sugar so it can form acid, and it can sit there and try to eat through the enamel on your tooth, okay, for 20 minutes, okay? And, in fact, these strawberries, over the last three or four years, have basically decayed many of her teeth to the point of root canals and extractions. And, and after talking more with her, most of her dental problems have come since she changed this diet thing. And she hadn't really figured that out just yet. Okay, um, uh, Sugar frequency is the whole thing. It really is. Okay, And there really are no good foods or bad foods when it comes to uh, decay. And uh, what you need to understand and get a grasp on is that whatever you're eating, now really people should eat healthy, obviously, you know, that's good for your body in general. But when it comes specifically down to decay, it's not what you're eating, it's not how much you're eating, it's how often you're eating. Uh, for example, if you're, going, if you're going to drink a pop and you realize, okay, pop's not great for your teeth, it's probably not good for your body either. But if you drink it down in two, three minutes, two, three, four, five minutes, something like that. That's a 20 to 25 minute exposure to acid. And if you're set for the afternoon, it probably didn't hurt you, okay? On the other hand, if you're in a circumstance or a habit of sitting down with a pop and sipping on it while you uh, drive from one appointment to another in a car or while you sit at your desk and work on the computer, every sip starts that 20 minute cycle of acid going and can destroy your teeth, okay? Now, that's uh, really what we're going to talk about for today. And what I want, to want you to take from this is the fact that it's how often, not how much. And if you sit down and make a notepad for yourself uh, on a given day, and every time something goes into your mouth that has sugar in it, you write it down on the line. The uh, whole meal is one line. One sip between meals is one line. Uh, you'll figure out real quickly what your actual acid exposure is on any given day. And believe me, that is the root of the problem when it comes to ongoing decay problems, especially for adults. Thank you.